Okay, so this article is from the BBC, right? So what's the future of The Office? Um, uh, what's the future for The Office? I've been a stringent um, supporter of remote wo- working for a while. I think having worked in the startup industry for most of my career um, and worked in various kind of corporate companies too. I've, I've worked in every com- I've worked in a company from like, I've been a 50th employee. I've also been a 500th employee, right? I've worked in, in both scales and everything in between. And I've noticed, especially in the places that I've enjoyed the most, places that have kind of aligned to my career goals, places where I felt comfortable, places where people were similar interests as mine and I've kind of aligned to the company goals and all that good stuff. I've always felt as if like the open plan working space was very um um it wasn't constructive for for like focus hard work especially when it required you to maybe implement a product set up a service uh get a campaign running things that kind of required a lot of mental acumen and some kind of level of concentration don't lend themselves well to an office where you can essentially kind of look up and kind of see your work make shout over get their attention make them come over to you and spoil their work um kind of you know their workflow and also those people around you and you know knowing myself i'm a loud person when i once i get going it's hard to turn me off so you know you can just imagine what that must be like with people like myself in the office and, and people who are um, louder or more gregarious than i am it can be a complete kind of horror show so i've always thought that you know this kind of idea that you know open the classic kind of work first where you had like people segmented in different teams or you had people locked in offices was kind of you know got went by the by and was made to be uncool was really uh was really kind of a short side idea and this idea that somehow because we were open plan we we're going to collaborate it never really come to fruition any kind of company you've been at i'm sure you can kind of attest to it the idea that you're going to collaborate with your teammate because you can kind of look over your monitors and see them is preposterous right you've got people that you like and you have people you don't like in the office if you're not if you don't like them you don't like them you're going to them so i think the coronavirus what is effectively done is uh is effective for especially people in management the people that actually kind of are the shot callers or not management because you know they're just uh glorified employees that kind of jack themselves off right but people that actually found companies and actually start them i think they've definitely realized once they look at the list of people's uh, list of employees and their output they've been able to kind of really focus in on the people that are actually pulling their weight and actually contributing large amounts or actually contributing some kind of effective um, strategies or whatever they're doing they're making some big changes in the company and the people that aren't doing so what well so right so people are pulling away people are not pulling away it's really easy to see once people work from home because it kind of levels the playing field and allows people to see exactly who's doing the work and when because you know there are no distractions effectively you have the quote-unquote privilege of being able to work from home so there is a kind of a mutual Ex- at, uh, there's a kind of mutual expectation that you should be given a bit more and if you are going to give a bit more it should be to a certain level because you know you've been given this kind of privilege but coronavirus has kind of put that aside that kind of you know weird sort of like um intrinsic uh guilt trip is sort of like been put to aside and just people are just able to just kind of just do their work and get on with it because there's only so much amount of wanking off and kind of you know getting distracted by youtube you can do once you're in lockdown because it gets a bit boring and actually doing your work is quite fun doing the best work you can do and being a family member of the team is quite beneficial for yourself for your career and those around you so i think it's made it's changed everything and i'm sure for the people that own these companies the soaring prices and rent especially in london that they're paying right to be because effectively offices are just offices are less so to are less to do with the actual employees and more to do with the board members and potential investors right especially in startup world you can't deny that you know having a work having a we work postcode somewhere in the middle of london is going to add some kind of level of cachet some kind of level of um you know luster and glitter to your name and to your reputation as a startup because other investors other vcs value we work too they have a place in the culture blah 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 right you know where that game kind of goes from but i think now what we're going to see is maybe an influx of more startups kind of launching and kind of coming out uh, from the reefer because they're going to feel as if like they finally got a chance to compete with companies because they're going to be given a fair crack of the whip regardless of where the offices are based because no one will have a quote-unquote head office they might have satellite offices or pure boxes where they kind of collect mail or places that they can collect meetings but the idea that you could walk into like a swanky you know um startup office with you know their kind of logo at the front and a pet dog that runs around the office that's going to be completely gone and i think that's a really great thing to see going forward i can't wait to see and kind of and this uh, article from the bbc echoes some of these thoughts that i've been speaking about let's quickly read through it so 
it says here uh before the coronavirus pandemic the office was where millions of us spent about a third of our time however since lockdown almost half the uk workforce say they've been working from home and some companies have hinted that it will become the future here's a quote it says the notion of putting seven thousand people in a building may be a thing of the past said the boss of barclays while morgan stanley's chief said the bank will have much less real estate businessman sir Mar martin sorrell said that they'd rather invest the 35 million he spent on expensive offices in people instead which is insane to think that they were doing it anyway and thought it was a good idea and it also goes to show just how uh bandwagony and uh copycat the business industry is at the moment one person does something and it works or the moment the industry kind of changes tact everyone follows suit and everyone kind of rabbits the same chorus the same kind of explanation money saving better for our workforce improving the culture it's all gobbledygook right they're only doing it, of course because of the pandemic but some of the more forward-thinking companies are already especially some of the people that have people that are actually operating on a high level or maybe roles that require people to concentrate for long periods of time would allow those key individuals to maybe work from home more so because there has there have been some companies where i've been had a more of a flexible working schedule maybe, maybe they'd maybe uh have a workforce that's predominantly made up of young parents and stuff where they maybe give them the option to work from home but mostly the companies i've worked for working from home has been seen like a privilege like if you get allowed to work from home it means you're a real teacher's pet it means you're a real bootlicker it means that you you know the kind of person that comes in at eight and leaves at 8 p.m right you've got no life your whole life kind of revolves around your work and what you do for your boss and your managers and shit which you know is by the by do what you want to do but you know i don't want to be friends with that kind of person but this culture shift now which allows everybody even the person that turns up exactly on time and leaves exactly on time is going to be great for the morale of the team in general and it's also going to be great because it's going to allow owners as well just to really identify who is actually making changes company who's actually pulling their weight and actually doing the work instead of kind of this idea that because you stay behind until 8 p.m it must mean you're a hard worker no you might be doing jack shit you might be just talking with your friends or on your phone or kind of you know resharing uh nonsense articles on the feed it does anyway continues it says the game is up for the office as we know it, uh, suggests Bruce Daisy, uh, who is author of Joy of Work. It says, unfortunately, we might get misty eyed about it, but I think the office is um, in the form of it used to be. It's probably now a thing of the past. I was chatting to someone who works at a major media outlet last week, and he said he used to have 1,400 people coming into his office every day. For the last eight weeks, he had 30 people and the product hasn't changed. He said anyone who thinks things are going to go back to the way they are is bananas, which is definitely true just can't justify and of course that's a big bank right saying 53 million I don't, uh, uh, 35 million sorry i don't think most companies spend that but you have to imagine just by what you know take into effect try and think about the closest friend you have who lives in london who has a really nice apartment and think about what they pay and then think about what it must be like to rent uh, an office space somewhere in and <laughs> near that where that person lives it's just insane and then the pra you know and then internet and utility bills and all that shit like oh insane um it continues here it says um but the current end of the office is not clear cut says uh professor andre spicer from city university cast business school he predicts a radical decrease in the amount of time people spend in the office but says off office work will not be over for good one reason he suggests is that home workers uh tend to not get promoted as quickly as they tend to be overlooked eh, that's not really that's true but if your whole workforce is working from home they're gonna have to implement some kind of procedures that can allow people to get promotions you know whether it's kind of quarterly reviews year reviews that give people an, an opportunity to kind of you know say their piece put their hat in the ring for an, uh, for a, a, a vacancy that comes up maybe an inter maybe an internal hiring um system there's going to be things they're going to put in place but i don't think if everyone's working from home it's going to affect you because you're the only one that turns up to the office because there's a lot of people especially in the companies i've worked in if you have a work from home option the people that take the piss out of it most are you usually the managers right your line manager is the one that you know they kind of sort off the most it's usually the underlings the kind of you know the employees or quote unquote the the people on the front line who actually have to kind of you know bite the bullet and come in most of the time during christmas and everyone's kind of fucking off they're the ones that really get um fucked up the arse with all that shit i don't really think it really affects the people that are actually at the top if you really think about it um so i don't think the idea they're gonna be able to promotion is gonna be a thing and also i think there's an aspect of if you are gonna work from home 
there's an opportunity for you to maybe change the way the office environment actually works. You can still have an option. You can still have the possibility of making it maybe mandatory or making it up or making it encouraged for people to come in, uh, you know, at the end of the month for like a company all hands on a Friday. And then it turns a company all hands into a really joyous occasion because people are going to have the opportunity to see their friends again from the office, right? Connect, catch up about stuff that they spoke about on Slack. Um, they're going to be encouraged to maybe share things that they've been working on at home and they're going to want to show and tell. Like imagine how fun those things are going to be. Usually they're really annoying because you spend half you spend most of the week at work trying to get work done everyone's distracting you and then when the all hands comes around you're like oh i don't have time to do the stuff that i was going to do and you're kind of um you're kind of annoyed that you're having to like you know sit around with your colleagues and listen to the manager talk about the goals of the company but if you actually have time to work at your at your craft do your job when it comes to the all hands you're going to be over the moon that you're going to have an opportunity to show off some of the work you've been doing behind the scenes you're going to love it um so it continues, it says here, particularly in times of economic crisis, people will start thinking, I want to be in your workplace. The boss needs to see me. Eh. Uh, again, it all, always has to come from a professor, isn't it? People that are not actually have skin in the game, who are not practitioners, people are just kind of, you know, critics and commentators from the outside, always have these kind of reservations. But the people that are actually working in the industry, people that have actually have jobs in these startups, who have worked in these corporate companies, you know that most of the times, especially if you're having to travel a far distance, you have to go to like, you know, the other side of London, you have to pay for a travel cars to pass through certain zones or bus tickets or you're having to kind of you know have a 40 50 minute bike ride that requires you to change and shower when you get to work you're going to be over the moon that you have the opportunity to work primarily from home with the option to go to the office when need be uh, it continues it says uh professor spicer suggests offices will remain as hubs where senior management are our base i don't agree because senior management have to take the piss and go, go home all the time he says with employees traveling in once a week to meet with their bosses that seems to be a similar to twitter's plan allowing staff to work from home forever it says here um, home working is not new it's been uh, upped in recent decades and many companies have already been trying to save money on rent by hiring co-working spaces that's not really a, a good idea though because co-working spaces are usually located in premium locations um, and they usually come with a lot of kind of added on benefits such as you know a fully stocked com communal area with tea and coffee and shit that always gets added onto your monthly rent you know utilities already set up um, plugs uh, chairs all that good shit is already built in so it's a kind of a tax you get added on to it and the fact that you've got a really advantageous postcode so the fact that you think you're going to be able to pay less there is really a misnomer you pay for the kind of a, a brand a, a brand alignment right you want to be in a building surrounded by companies that are similar to yours like right those building i forgot there's a building in shortage like that where there's loads of financial kind of companies uh that work here fintech companies right and they all kind of situate in the same building you kind of want that alignment so that's mostly what people do um, so see, um, how they affect us as many of us have already discovered some of the perks of the problems of working from home some are obvious no commute less chance to socialize with colleagues but others go to the heart of identity quote it says i think we should uh all howl at well we're uh, howl at what we're losing says lucy kellaway who has written a book about fiction and non-fiction about offices i think the most important thing about office is it gives more it gives some sort of meaning to what we do most of what we do to our laptops let's face it's pretty much meaningless the best way of thinking there's uh, some point of it is having other people who are sitting around you yeah but i don't think that's a good idea i think if anything covid lockdown has taught us what's meaningful is your friends and family being able to touch feel hug uh, speak to and hang around people that you care care about for real is what the world should be about more so all these kind of like fake surface level work friendships that you kind of cultivate because you have no one else to talk to or because you spend all your time in the office isn't healthy it's not good for your mental right you need to have that separation of being able to go into work uh, do your job and also go home and uh, connect with your family and friends and not feel like you know every kind of conversation you have with your family and friends revolves around the people that you work with that is not a life worth living i think this um, separation is going to be for the better it's going to increase and really it's going to really it's going to really separate the friendships that you have and also kind of it's going to bring you're going to see the benefits of having work colleagues as friends when you meet them you know every week to do an all hands or to have like a company meeting or to do the stand up whatever it may be and you're going to have the benefit of unplugging and pulling out and seeing your friends during the week and catching up with drinks i think those are two perfect things but the idea that you're somehow losing your identity because you're not connected with your friends is ridiculous you shouldn't your work shouldn't be your identity anyway your identity should be the things that you do for your friends and family in your community not the work that you do 
the money that you you know the money you made to kind of keep the lights on that's ridiculous there's only a certain group of people a small segment of the population that are maybe working in a vocation that they've kind of longed and loved to do since they were a kid fair enough but for the most part when most of us are working in companies or in jobs that we could give a shit about but we do it because you know we want to be a, a valuable member of society we want to kind of contribute to the household bills we want to support our family keep a roof over our heads pay for our holidays all that good shit and companies are willing to kind of give that exchange right they give you money you give them time boom you keep it going uh, blah, blah, blah. so she adds here the office uh keeps us sane and gives us routine um and once there and once we're there we can be a different person i don't know about you but i'm mostly sick and tired of being the same person all day as i slouch around your home what the fuck is she talking about? It was insane. What are you? Why are you being a different person when you go to work anyway? I've always hated that. People that have different faces when they're at work. Be yourself. If you can't be yourself at the place you're working at, maybe go somewhere else, right? That's not a really, that's not healthy that you're kind of turning into different people, switching and turning. That's a problem that you see a lot when people go to like, when people have work drinks and somebody gets a little bit, you know, maybe someone gets a little bit handsy or they get a little bit aggressive or they get a little bit belligerent, right? Because you don't necessarily see that side of them at work because they try and keep this professional face when they're at work all the time. No, be yourself. And why would you have your identity framed around the thing that you do for nine to five as a work? It doesn't make any sense. Um, I wanted to have a different clothes, go to the office, see different people and who become a lifelong friends. I have a couple of complete laugh with them I'm here. But you can do that when you're at home too. Have a routine. Wake up at a certain time. Uh, shower in the morning. That's something I've been doing uh, um, consistently. Um, waking up in the morning, listening to my audio book, doing a bit of meditation, showering in the morning, changing into some comfortable clothes not not pajamas and not kind of going out clothes but comfortable clothes that you know i've made an effort to kind of get dressed do those things and you can also have that can also kind of give you some level of routine that we don't need to go to the office to do so um Oh, the only thing I think that's going to be really uh, detrimental to some people is this kind of social aspect of work. A lot of people generally don't have any friends. Like legitimately, the only friends they they, they collect over life, because it's hard to find, unless you have an interest, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Yeah, it's hard to find friends when you're, you know, over the age of maybe 21, right? It's just difficult to get new friends. So some people only collect friends once they're at work because you're kind of forced to get to know people because you're with them eight hours a day, 36 hours a week, right? It's, it's just something that kind of ha has to happen over a period of time. But I think it's going to, like I said, I think working from home is going to allow you to maybe value the actual friendships you have at work. And it's also going to allow you to actually value the people that you know outside of outside of your occupation i would imagine so but i would imagine that's the one bit people are going to suffer from the idea of not having able to be able to chit chat and then maybe that, that might be a real side indictment on work culture where the most thing the thing that you miss the most is the chats because you know this let's be honest I, i'm not a fan of nine to fives but you are working for somebody right they are paying you to go into the office and work for them the fact that you miss the social side of it is a really really bad indictment on yourself and the overall um idea of working in, in the office right the fact that the social side is something that you miss the most right the chats at the coffee machine about so and so it's just like that's nonsense it says here professor spicer says attitudes no studies show that people who work from home are more productive and happier especially without the commute and one of the big factors that make people unhappy but among the downsides she cites one study showing home workers feel that they are in exile yeah that's because it's before no Dude, these studies are only based on old again these this is what i mean about this is due to lockdown thing these studies are based on the old reality that we had the reality of pre of prior uh you know post um not post uh, prior to covid right now we're in post when now we're living in a post covid world it's different because we're all going to be working from home so this idea that you're missing out this idea that people are getting one up on you because they're turning up in the office at 8 and leaving at 8, at 8 p.m it's not going to be exist anymore because we're all working from home um, it continues uh, catching their boss's eye becomes their job and it's their desire to be seen as doing stuff and when you're not you become a bit worried and paranoid yeah that's a general working workplace thing but I think that's going to be replaced actual doers and actual practitioners are going to be rewarded more so than people that actually you know lick their asses and you know boot lickers and all those kind of things are going to be put by the wayside because your numbers and the kind of stats and the things that you pull in are going to be there in black and white you're going to, not going to be able to banter and kind of form have you seen people in sometimes in team meetings who don't really haven't really done the work and they kind of fly and you know talk a lot of bullshit during team meetings and kind of just you know make a couple of jokes so they can get out of kind of being drilled down on what they actually did this is going to do a do away with it because the numbers are going to be there you can't lie anymore um it says here homework and discuss the benefits let's see what i have to say
to stop myself getting distracted, I make sure I turn all the notifications and app icons off of my mobile phone so that I can't be interrupted. I tend to go into those applications when I'm ready to take those messages. Other things I do as well is remove the batteries from my doorbell so I'm not interrupted during conference calls and webinars. That's, inc that's insane, isn't it? Too much stuff there, man. People that... I've always, I've always wondered, like, what kind of level of self-control are you unable... Like, I know, I, know, I know willpower was overrated and you have to put some kind of... You have to put some... Proceed, you have to put some processes in place in order for you to be the most effective self. I know that. But this idea that you have to delete apps, take batteries out of doorbells and shit, turn off your phone notification just so you could do your work is really, really grim. It shows just how fucking tethered and tied we are to our phones, isn't it? They sort of it's ingrained in our fucking nervous system that we have to kind of turn them off electronically, right? Take out the batteries in order for us to be det detached from them. We can't just do our work for an hour. Because I remember I used to do that with myself when I I'm out, I get fairly distracted pretty easily in the places I've worked. And that's some common kind of feedback that I've, I've been I've gotten from like my managers and shit. But when I do the work, I do the work. But one thing that I did when I was in school, when I was kind of behind in my GCSEs, and I needed to kind of catch up in the revision, is that I just kind of uh, built up a revision timetable that was essentially drawn out similar to my week by week schedule I had in school. So if I had you know science on a Monday, Monday morning for two hours, I would just revise science for two hours, right? But what I'd do is that I'd cut it into like twenty minute chunks. I'd do twenty minutes of kind of focus study, little five minute doodle break, look out in the window, draw something, go on the internet, twenty minutes again of focus study, and just continued going on and on with that system until it got to a point where I could I could kind of hold my concentration for the allotted two hours or an hour and a half without brain concentration without getting distracted by anything. I could do that very easily. And I had a room with a Nintendo 64 in, a PS4, a mobile phone, internet. I had a room full of distractions, comic books and shit, trainers, stuff that I could always kind of get lost in. And I just be able just to kind of focus in on that and do the thing. I think that's really important because there's not going to be an occasion in life every, there's not going to be, not every occasion is going to allow you to take away all those kind of external um, distractions there's going to be occasions like it's like somebody that can't work in a busy coffee shop like what do you have to always be in a library you have to always be in a co-working space imagine if there's no room and you have to work in a coffee shop what are you going to do then or oh, i can't work in music get to learn how to work in music learn to work how learn how to work with distractions around you that's the best way to go about things because Especially working from home, there's going to be some times where you might want to change the scenery. It's, it's advantageous to be able to walk into anywhere, especially except for going to, oh, I need to only go to that place because that place is quiet and no one goes there. And then suddenly you turn up there and there's a bloody big team meeting conference and it kind of throws you off kilter. So the number of home workers, I don't know, let's continue. Tips for working from home is that you are getting out and meeting new people on a day-to-day -day basis. You can go wherever you want and work remotely. So it doesn't matter whether you are a local um, pub or you're at a local office place yeah, there's yes, more mama. freedom to go wherever you need to be now the downside of working from home and obviously being remote working is that having the conversation with other people so you're not obviously in the same environment every single week it can be very isolating it can be very lonely um, and you end up doing things that you don't normally do so you could end up scrolling on social media all the time and not getting focused on the work you should be doing I find it the opposite for myself, really. Maybe it's just me. I find that I concentrate way more at home, but maybe it's, again, it's a, it's a temperament of the person. I concentrate a lot more at home than I would do at work, and I'm prone to spend less time on my phone than I am at work. At work, I try and do everything but work for some odd reason i'm not too sure why maybe because i'm a, in the back of my head i'm expecting someone to distract me or because i feel like i could catch up on something l later on but most of my best work concentrated work has come from working from home and then once i have to go to a team meeting or do like a, a powwow in the office or whatever i can come to that meeting and it, it definitely i think you guys can attest to this if ever you've kind of worked in isolation and you have to kind of come together and sort of like present your work before you present it to the company there's a lot more energy a lot more viva a lot more ideas a lot more kind of intuition and innovative creative ideas that come to the forth because you've been i said at home you're eager to kind of show off to your colleagues and you're eager to kind of present something so that you can take that to the office in general i think that happens more often than not i would imagine so it continues it says here what's that the charity mind has raised concerns that some home workers may feel isolated or lonely just get used to it man come on let's grow up a little bit one of the biggest things I hated about working from home was it's quite lonely um, and it's really hard to clock off, whereas a co-work space, you can have that work-life balance uh, and it's brilliant. 
Yeah, I think that's a fair um, adjustment. If you're that lonely and you really need people around you, go to a co-working space. Most co-working spaces allow you to just sit in a reception for free. Um, I'm sure nowadays there's going to be maybe a change in that effect. There might be a, a pass that you can buy. I'm sure there'll be co-working spaces like that where you can buy like a pass that allows you to kind of sit in there for 50 quid a week or something. I don't know. There's going to be some option that's going to exist, especially if you live in areas that are nearer to your offices, right? If you're living in like the the hipster areas there's going to be probably more offices like that if you're living in areas like myself that are a bit out of the way you might have to kind of travel in but you know there's optional of course if you want to start your own little co-working space you can do so i think that would be a really cool idea um for someone to start up a little co-working space that allows people to come in have some coffees sit down socialize with people maybe have a drink at the end of the month when it's payday you get some drinks and people can have a little gather around that kind of allows a kind of monotony to kind of be broken up a little bit i think that would be pretty cool but i think this idea that you're going to be lonely 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 is a little bit of an overstatement and again it's a side indictment on workplace because it means that the most few people are missing is only the kind of chats that they have with people in the office but you know i think by and by it's a good option going forward and of course having a dedicated dedicated workspace is always really important as well you need that man you need that kind of